can you still be bound and serve God? Okay, I love that question. I'm going to answer that question with another question. Or rather, I'm going to question you and you answer me and that's going to be your answer. If I was the leading top oncologist for cancer, which is cancer in the blood, um, and everyone in the country came to me or to that person for help in the area of cancer, they were the leading, or let's say you are the leading top surgeon for cancer. Let me ask you this question. If that leading surgeon of cancer ever got cancer, does that disqualify, disqualify them from being the leading voice or the leading surgeon for cancer if the cancer doctor got cancer? No. The leading surgeon for cancer, though they get cancer, can still help people get free from cancer. Wow. So it's the same way with deliverance or in any other ministry. Yeah. Just because you might be struggling with it doesn't mean you can't help someone else get free mm. that are struggling with it. Mm. I think religion disqualifies us, wow. but Jesus qualifies us. Mm. Let me ask you a question. Did Judas cast out demons? Mm. Was he a betrayer? Yeah. Of course he was. Yeah, did on. Jesus still let him cast out demons? Yeah. Did Jesus? Did Judas have a demon? The Bible actually says Satan entered Judas. Wow. So yet Judas, who was demonized, cast out demons. Wow. As a matter of fact, I could go even a step further. Come I on. could go a step further. Many in that day will say, Lord. <laughs> Did I not cast out demons in your name? He said, depart from me, you work of iniquity. Oh, so work of iniquity can do deliverance effectively. Wow. So you can be, so an infected can actually disinfect someone else. Wow. That's true kingdom. Because the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Wow. God knows how to separate the gift from the message or the message from the messenger or the message from the mantle and the gift from the person. God just needs me to be his hands and feet. He could care less about me, even though he does care about yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, if I was to lose my way, but the gift remain intact, God will still use me. Yeah. Even though um, my character's yeah. off. Now it's not an excuse to go and live in sin. Yeah. But do we sin? Yeah. Is he faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse? Yeah. All right. Does he still use us? Wow. Of course he does. Wow. So the prerequisite for helping people get delivered is not perfection. Mm -hmm. It's willingness to do it. Wow. And availability. Wow. And God is. God can use a donkey, why he can't use me? Wow. He can use me, but we're not donkeys, we're sons. But the, the metaphor is there. So God can and will use people uh, who might not necessarily be perfect um, to help people get set free. So you can be unhealthy, right. but helping other people be healthy. Yeah, that's the beauty of the gospel. Mm. And, and the, religious, the beauty of the gospel the is he spirit. uses the unhealthy to make people healthy and the religious spirit will come to that and be like no you can't because you're, right. you're not you don't you're not you know fit for it you right. don't have the criteria you don't have the credentials exactly for it. and how do you actually counter that religious spirit i mean how do you overlook that and still keep on going because there are a lot of i think i think i reckon the biggest deception people in the church are, are facing is probably religion the religious spirit right do you agree yeah yeah, um, that's a tough question. That's a tough question to answer. I think um, I think one of the probably the the most ideal way to counterattack the religious model or worldview yeah. is with revelation. I think it all starts with worldview, and worldview are shaped shaped by belief systems. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so, so is he. So one of the first ways to begin to break the religious spirit is the need for an apostolic grace. The wow. apostolic grace shatters wow. the system on which the religious worldview is founded. So they'll come with a revelation re thrust out the system. So therefore, when the system is broken down, the person is left with no other choice wow. but to conform. Let me give you an example of how that works. Um, so, so, the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, oh, 
John's, John's, uh, uh, by what authority do you do these things? Yeah. And the verse actually says that they came to tempt Jesus, mm -hmm. which means they were being religious. Right. Um, so then Jesus said, and they said, but what authority do you do this thing? You know, right? So then Jesus, instead of saying, I do this by the Father's authority, he said, I'll answer that question with the question. Mm -hmm. John's baptism, what authority did he do it? And the religious people went to the side and began to deliberate and conversate about what they, so they said this, if we say this, he's going to say, why didn't you believe him? Yeah. If we say that, the people are going to stone us. Yeah. So watch this. So he presented a, a uh, uh, he confronted the system by which their question was being answered. And because they didn't, because they couldn't answer it both ways, because whichever way it went, it would have to conform against them. Yeah. They ended up staying quiet. Wow. They were left with no choice but to um, um, conform to Jesus' words. Let me even go a step further with that, how Jesus did that. So they tried to catch Jesus with taxes. Right. And they said, uh, do you pay taxes? Yeah. You know, he said, bring me, bring me a coin. He said, whose inscription is this? It's Caesar's. Give to Caesar's what is Caesar's. Give to God what is God's. He confronted the system. They had left, no, left with no choice to confront. So the secret is this. Supernatural apostolic wisdom will confront the system. It demolishes the system. And when the system is demolished, the person is left with no choice but to conform. Because whichever way they answer or they react, it goes in your favor. Wow. That's how you, uh, that's how you confront uh, the religious mindset. Wow. Let me go. Let me even go a step further and answer that on a personal basis. Most churches mm. are anti-deliverance. Mm. The deliverance revelation um, is ostracized in the church for whatever reason it is. Okay. All right. So. So how do I counterattack that? Mm. Very simple. Put them in a place where they're forced to ask themselves, um, do, does it matter mm. if a person gets free? Yeah. It um, does matter. Yeah, yeah. But if I say embrace deliverance, they'll fight me. Yeah, yeah. So if I say, do you want them to be free? Yeah, it's different. They have to answer. So if they say yes, they've just embraced deliverance. Yeah without me having to tell them, you need to embrace deliverance. Yeah. What did I do? I, I demolished their religious worldview and I gave them a human worldview. Wow. I gave them a worldview of compassion. Wow. I gave them a compassion. Do you want this person to get set free from pornography? Any person, even a religious person will say, yeah. So how do they get free? By default, it's through deliverance. Wow. So I just made them, the religious person, actually agree with me because I didn't change their thought. I broke the foundation of where that thought is coming from. Wow. That's how you help people get free is put them in a place where another model has to be in place for them to respond to that. Yeah. Most Christians want other Christians free. Mm. So that's kind of like how, that's how Jesus did it. Yeah. That's how Jesus did it. Wow. That's why he said, he said, they'll know that you're Christian by, by your love. So love is at the, apostolic love and revelation is at the core of that. Wow. And it forces someone to wow. kind of wow. go in a different do you, do you feel, worldview. Do you, do you feel that when people come into church, and they kind of have to, because of the religious spirit, right. they kind of have to play church or act right. like they're in church, right. but they really, struggling behind the scenes. Right. Do you, do you see all the time and, and church people kind of just go with the flow and they don't confront right. that, but deliverance right. kind of says, Hey, listen, you don't have to be like that. Right. Um, why do people play church? It goes back to the same thing that I was saying. It's a, it's a worldview that's right. there. Everything is, it's a worldview that's there. It's a foundation. It's a whole building that's there. So, um, it's kind of like, um, a filter, a filter on a faucet right so right. you have pure water comes in and then you got these filters that are there and it kind of right. turns the water into something else um, just remove the filter when you remove the filter you'll kind of go back but if the filter remains there then I can't get mad for Christians basically being fake 
Right. Because the religious system is yeah. built on the external. Right. That's the foundation of it. Right. The kingdom is not the external. Mm. It's actually the internal. Wow. So all you gotta do is just get the focus off of the external. Get stop focusing on Martha in the kitchen. Yeah. Who's doing a system and just flip it and make them be like Mary that's sitting at Jesus' feet. Wow. And a whole different system comes in play and then they'll stop being fake. They'll yeah. stop being fake. You're a kingdom preacher. Right. In one word, describe right. the kingdom. Influence. 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 Heaven's influence invading uh, a system on earth or rather heaven's influence on the earth and that influence dominating um, that system, therefore producing um, the influence of wherever it's coming from to extend that influence in that new system. So I believe kingdom is influence. Wow. The influence of heaven invading another influence or another system and therefore influencing that kingdom so that way this influence now extends itself and becomes that that yeah. influence yeah. on the new kingdom. So that's kind of like wow. how, I, wow. how I view it. It's powerful. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys, I hope you've... Uh, it's a mouthful. Right? It's a mouthful. Yeah. Very deep. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you've learned something, been inspired, impacted, and uh, we're going to have Apostle back very, very soon.